Hi. Hello, we're here. <laughs> um, okay, so thank you for coming, first of all. What we're going to do is I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start a story, I'm going to start drawing, I'm going to ask you for suggestions, and we're going to create the story together. Now, if you had a chance, um, you might have already um, uploaded or downloaded, <laughs> downloaded this tree that I sent through. If you haven't, if you don't have the tree to work with, you can just use a piece of paper, a pencil, a pen, crayon, anything you have, okay? Um, or you can just sit and watch. So you have a choice of what you want to do. Uh, we have you, um, we're going to, uh, sometimes we'll be putting you on mute when I'm talking, but a lot of times I can hear you. So um, if you want to, yell out some suggestions or you have some ideas then please do that that would be great okay um, okay so what I thought was recently since we've been living through some very strange days and you're spending a lot of time at home or in your backyard um, I started thinking about what sort of things make you feel happy what do we do when we're feeling a little scared or sad or how do we find comfort um, so one of the things I love to do is I love to go outside, go in my backyard, find a beautiful tree and sit under that tree. And often when I'm sitting under the tree, I think, I think of, wow, what? This tree can offer so much. What kind of things can this tree offer as far as comfort? It's certainly giving me shade from the sun. It's giving me something to lean on. Um, and there's many other things a tree can offer. So I thought, well, why don't we create together a sort of a comfort tree or a tree of things um, that, that bring us joy or make us happy or how that tree can help us. So we're going to start with that idea, but it can go anywhere we want it to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my tree because you already have a tree in front of you, or if not, you can draw a tree as well. So I'm going to start with my tree. So here it goes. Here's my branches. So if you don't have the tree that I printed for you, then you make your own tree right now. You can make your own tree. And all you have to do is lots of lines off of it. And you don't have to put any leaves or anything on yet. We can add those later. All we need is branches that we can use to put some of our characters in that we want to put in today. So I put, I'm putting all kinds of branches here. So there's another branch and there's another branch. Okay, I've got lots of branches. So I started thinking, okay, the first thing I thought, okay, I lay against a tree and I like to lean against a tree and I thought of an animal that might like to do that. By the way, we don't have to just use animals. We can use any kind of characters we want. So you can use your imagination with this. This can have dragons or fairies or anything in this tree, okay? But we're gonna start with this animal and then I want you to be thinking about what other creatures and animals, how they might use a tree like this and where we can put them in the tree. So I'm going to start because I, we did a bear the last time we were here. So I thought, I bet you a bear would love to scratch his back on a tree. So I'm going to put a nice little bear here and he's gone, here's his little ear and here's his face. Here's his cheek, he's, we're looking at him from the side. And here's his arm, and here's his belly, and his big legs, there's one sitting out there. And he needs another little leg. And maybe he's uh, sitting there scratching his back and eating some berries at the same time. So we'll give him some berries, there we go. He's having a little munch. There's his nose, his mouth, and here's his eye and another little ear. If you draw a bear, you can draw any kind of bear you want. He doesn't have to look like my bear. You can do anything you like. So there's my little bear sitting against the tree eating some berries. Now, can anybody there, I don't know if I, you, I can hear you or not, can you suggest something else that might come to the tree and, and come for some kind of comfort or what it might come for? Can anybody think of another animal that might come into a tree? I know what you did. A bat. A what? A bat. A bat? A bat and I hear a squirrel and a bat. Okay, let's do a squirrel and a bat. So, a bat might fly around the tree. Maybe he would like to fly around looking for insects that might be there sitting around the leaves. So let's put a bat in here first. So I'll have the bat flying around, maybe up here. Okay, here he is. Here's his little ears. I have to think I haven't drawn a bat in a very long time. They kind of remind me of kitties a little bit. So I'm going to make him kind of like a, a kitty face, but I'm going to give him sharp teeth. Whoop, whoop. And then I got to give him some pointy wings because they have very pointy wings, don't they? 
not like birds who are feathery. Theirs are very different. And I'm going to give them a little body and a little feet to take a landing. So there's my bat. So the bat's buzzing around. So maybe he's getting some snacks, like some little bugs and things that are flying around the tree. There's that. Okay, so we have a bat and a squirrel. So a squirrel would probably be sitting in the tree, probably eating some, maybe some acorns or something, or maybe around the tree on the ground. So let's put him here. I'll stick him right here in one of these branches. So here's little squirrel. Here he goes. Now you can put a little squirrel, but you can add anything you want to yours. Here he is, and here's his big fuzzy tail. There he is. Oh, I love the idea of the flying squirrel. That's a great idea. Okay, he could be flying around with the bat. So he's got a little acorn up there. Okay, so now we need some kind of bigger creature that might come in. What what could what else could come into this this scene? Um, be coming maybe to get some shade or have a rest from flying around, or or maybe we could just make something up. Does anybody have any ideas? Okay, I'm going to suggest something since I'm not hearing anything. Oh, a what? A moose? Am I hearing a moose? Okay. Okay, I'm going to put a moose right here behind the bear. And you know what? A moose might like to scratch his antlers, his big, his big head rack of antlers on a tree. So I'm going to put him right here. Here's his face coming in the side. Here's his antlers. Now some of them are going to be off of the whole thing I'm drawing here, but you'll see them peeking out. Here comes an antler in here. Look how big his antlers are. It's that big that they're, they're even behind the, the whole tree. Okay, here's his face. Oh, there's his big face. Oh, here's some nice eyeballs. Need some eyeballs, a little bit of nostrils, a little mouth here. There he is, scratching his antler on the tree. So they, they might get itchy around there. Oh, and they need ears. Here's some big ears. Here's ears. I don't know. And here comes his leg. They're quite long legs. And here he is with his gruff. He's standing in here. Maybe he's standing in some grass that grew under the tree. Put it up here, here, here. Oh, and there's the moose. You see him coming in, scratching his antler. Okay, I'm going to do something, and I want you to watch, and you tell me if you can guess what's coming in. This is going to be something very big, okay? And it's not usually a, it's not a creature that you would actually see in the forest. This is a creature from my imagination, but you, I think, will recognize this. You just watch what I'm going to do. Here it comes. This is the bat. Watch, it's so big. It's bigger than the tree. Here it comes. This is the back right here. Keep watching. Okay, here I think is going to be the tail. It's going to go all the way up here. Look, he's behind the tree peeking out. There's his tail. It's pointy. Does that give you any clues of what this might be? Here he comes. He's coming down, down, oh, coming down through the squirrel, behind the squirrel. So you see this big thing? What, does anybody guess what that might be that's coming? Here he comes. And here. Anybody tell what that is yet? Is it still a mystery? Yes. Dinosaur. Close. You're very close. This is a dinosaur. Was a creature that actually existed. This creature we're not. We think is a, a, from our imagination. So it's it's like a dinosaur. I'm gonna a have unicorn. Oh, gee, that would be good. Actually, I should do a unicorn. I didn't think of that. No, it's not a unicorn. Here it comes. This is going to be its head. Just watch. Can you tell what he is yet? A dragon. Yeah, a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we need a unicorn in here. If we're going to have a dragon, I think a unicorn should be in here anyway. Now they can have some sharp teeth. This dragon has sharp teeth. Look at his teeth right here. And he's got a big flaring nostril. And he could be putting a little puff of smoke could be coming out. Here's his eye. Look, he's got a great big eye. Whoop. There he is. Coming in. Oh, here. Let's give him some kind of flaming 
ear shapes. So you could put a dragon in yours, but you don't have to. You can put some other kind of creature. So here, back here, is his back leg. Look, it's all, he's all twisted up. There's his belly coming in here. And then he's got another leg. I'm Whoa. doing a fire unicorn. A, f a what? A fire unicorn? Yeah. Oh, so like, you mean like he breathes fire like a dragon? Yeah. No, uh, no, it's, it's mean is me to fire. His, oh, I love that. Okay, I will do that. Why not? I think that's a great idea. So look at his legs. He's completely twisted up. Look, he's flying in. Here's another leg here. And I'm even going to throw in some kind of wing right here. A couple of sets of wings, sort of like the bat wings because they're a little pointier. They don't have feathers. Or at least my, my dragon doesn't, but some dragons could have feathers. Okay, so here's the wings. Okay, so here he is. Look, he's all discombobulated. Look at his legs all twisted up here. He's coming in for a landing on this tree. Now, let's put a unicorn. So let's put him, I know, how about we put the unicorn head coming in right here to greet the dragon. Here he comes, and he's going to be have a flaming mane, right? That's the idea. Or you know what? We could even have a unicorn flying. Like, should we have the unicorn flying or on the ground? What do you think? I will do two unicorns. Okay, so we have one flying, one on the ground. All right, here comes the here comes the first. This is just the unicorn's head coming in to greet him. So he's coming in from the side, and here he comes. Okay, here comes the mane. Look, at this is a flaming mane. Now I need a horn, so let's put the horn up here. Oh, it looks like it's poking the bear's leg. I have to be careful where I put the horn. Okay, so there's a horn, and here's more of a mane. Okay, this is really a flaming mane. And then here comes the unicorn. Here comes, big eye. Big eye for the unicorn. I'm doing a tiny unicorn coming in. You see, the side. Are you drawing that? Yeah. Oh, that's great. It's a baby fire unicorn. Oh, a baby fire unicorn. It can be, maybe this is the mama or the daddy or or maybe a brother or sister. Here it comes, look at the flames. See, I'm gonna put lots of flames coming off of its head. And all the way down its back, here comes some more. These are all made, and you know, you could, you could make them look like flames by the way you paint them or how the colors. Look, here he comes, he's coming in, he's coming in and he's having a little smile with the dragon because they have something in common. Because the dragon can make fiery breath and the unicorn has a fiery mane. So that's kind of cool. Oh, I forgot to give the, the unicorn an ear. Well, let's do this first. There he goes. Maybe There's the that's horn. the uncle. Oh, it could be the uncle. Why not? Absolutely. Okay, so now we have, we have quite a story here. So we have, we, and we want to make sure that with all these flames coming off of the dragon and the unicorn, that they're not going to set our forest on fire. So we're going to make sure, here we have, Beside, beside this tree, I'm going to do something to make sure that we don't have too much heat in our forest. You watch what I'm gonna do. So here's the tree, right? So we have this bear, we have a bear scratching its back. We have a leaning against a tree, using it so he can eat his berries. We have a moose scratching his antlers. We have a squirrel collecting maybe some acorns that could be actually in the tree, which we can add. We have a bat flying around, maybe just getting some little bugs. I'm gonna put the little bugs around that might be around the tree so it can have a snack. And then we have a dragon who's coming for a landing to get shelter from the tree. Maybe it's a big sunny day and it needs to have some shelter. And then he's Maybe got some- Maybe he needs to recharge his firepower. I think, you know what? I think that's exactly what he probably needs to do. He needs to recharge his firepower, but he wants to make sure that he doesn't get the tree on fire or any of the forest. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to put a little right beside the tree. Watch this, it's gonna come in here. I'm going to have a river flowing right through here, right through here too, right by the dragon, right by the unicorn, where the, there's water so that if anything gets too hot, it can get cooled off with the beautiful stream running by the tree. Not only that, but the beautiful stream can also be a place where they can get a little drink so then some other animals can come. And hey, if you have water, what goes in the water? What kind of creatures are in the water? Manta ray. A manta ray. <laughs> a manta ray could be in the water for sure. <laughs> well, let's see. 
a manta ray. A manta ray can be there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put a manta ray, but you only see a part of his little, his fin, because those manta rays have those giant, you know, big, big um, flippery thing. Oh gosh, I should know what that is, but sort of their fins, and they're kind of shaped like, like that. And I don't know if you've ever um, got to see or feel a manta ray. They're pretty cool, actually. They flow, they look like a bird when they're underwater. And they have a big, long, pointy tail, but there's the manta ray coming into the water. Because you know what? We're using our imagination, so no matter where this forest is, we can have a manta ray in our river. Okay, we need some more creatures in here. So we have the flaming unicorn. Oh, we have a unicorn we have to put in the sky. I forgot. Okay, let me do that. Oh, before I do that, one thing you could do, if you do ever do a creature like this, like this big dragon, and you want scales, you can do this, watch. You can make kind of scales. And see how I'm making these lumps like this? See, they're almost like, I guess it's like a backwards three or little mountains. You can keep layering those up like this, watch. And what happens is every time you put another layer of bumps in, another layer of bumps, here comes. And look what I'm doing. I'm actually creating scales on my dragon. And these are on fish. Sometimes bird feathers look like this. So it's a kind of a fun trick if you want to actually make scales. You just keep layering up little mountains, like almost like little M's. There's one, actually like triple M's. One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm kind of creating scales on him. And now he's going to look like a big scaly dragon. And I can paint those in and I can show you how I'll paint those in. They're going to be really fun to paint. Okay, let me go back to the top. Okay, I forgot. I have to do a unicorn flying up here. All right, this is going to be interesting. Here it goes. And if anybody can think of anything else we need, so we can, we can eat from a tree. Spider. Which, what? Spider. Spider? Spider. spider. So, did I hear spider? Spider. No. I... Yeah. Spider. You got to say yes and say it louder because you can't see yes. it. A spider? All right. Should he be a very big spider or just a little spider? Big. Big. Oh, this is going to be a really scary tree. Okay, he's. I'm going to make him a friendly spider, but I will make a big spider in the tree. Here he comes. Oh, boy. I don't know. Some people are really afraid of spiders. You shouldn't be afraid of spiders. Around here, we don't really have too many dangerous spiders. But I'm going to make him a happy spider. So spiders, one of the things my kids didn't like about spiders were their eyes. Because inside their eyes, they have a whole bunch of other little eyes, and that kind of scared them. But if you think about it, that's pretty cool if you had all these ways of looking around. So, how many legs does a spider have? Eight. Eight legs. So here's his big abdomen. That's his body. So I've got two legs there. Here comes another one. One, there's another leg. So how many have I got so far? Can you tell how many legs I have there? I've got one, two, three, four. Oh my gosh. How am I gonna get eight legs on this body? There's Five, here's six. Oh, he is looking a little creepy. Okay, here's seven legs, and there's eight legs. Ooh, there he is. Okay, but you see how scary he looks? If you think about him, he is kind of cute and round, and maybe we'll do this. Look, we'll give him a nice little smile, and instead of a billion eyes, I think we'll just give him a couple of big googly eyes looking at you, like that, and I'm gonna give him a little striped body. He's going to have a nice little striped body. There he is. And he's hanging out. And I'll put a little bit of a web in this tree so that he can have like a little web. He or she could have a little web. Here they are. Here. Oh, there's some webs. And webs, you can actually just do lots of lines and then cross them. And you can put little curves like that and make like a little web. Okay, so now we have a spider smiling down. We have quite a crazy tree. And I guess a spider can use a tree to put a web in. So make a little home. So now your tree can be food, it can be a home, it can be a resting place, it can be a place to, um, to rest up and get your fire powers back. It could be a scratching place for your antler if you're a moose or if, it, if you're a human, maybe you want to scratch your back on a tree. Um, it can also be a little squirrel who maybe, you know what, the squirrel could actually have a home right inside the tree. So I'll put a little hole here. And maybe inside here is where he's been storing all his, his nuts he's been collecting. And that'll be his little home. Okay, so I'm gonna put one more thing. I, I mentioned, a, someone mentioned a unicorn flying. If you have any other ideas, let me know, because we're gonna run out of time. So I'm gonna have 
I'm going to put a unicorn coming right in here, flying along. Here it comes. Okay, unicorn. It's a, it looks... Maybe it's a baby unicorn. Yeah, I think this is a baby unicorn. Let's make this a baby unicorn. Maybe it's, it could be an angel fire unicorn. An angel fire eating unicorn? Yeah. Okay, it's why... Fire. Oh, okay. Here it comes, and that's good to me. It's a baby, but he's not smaller. He's not smaller than the spider, but he's far away. So he's coming in to find, find his, his what his mother? his mother. Sure, he's coming in to find his mother. He says, "Mom, I'm coming in for a visit," and he gets to meet the dragon, which would be pretty cool. Here's the main. He gets to meet his uncle. His uncle. That's it. Oh, that would be great to get to meet his uncle. Okay. Look, here's a little tail. There's his little legs. Whoops. Mommy, I'm coming. Mommy, I'm coming in. Here I come. And oh, he needs wings because he's flying. I'm going to give him some little feathery wings. Snake. What was that? Snake? Do I hear a snake? All right. Let me put a little snake in because I think snakes are actually beautiful. We have some gorgeous snakes in Nova Scotia. Those bright green grass snakes and those garter snakes are really cool. There we go. Okay, so here he comes. Coming in to find the mama and to meet the uncle. Okay, so we'll have that there. Now, I'm gonna put a snake down here. I think I'll have a snake over here, around, right around where the, the oh, what we got here, a moose and a bear. So here he comes, and he's, maybe he's talking to, the, talking to the bear. Are you ready? Here it comes. And he's got his mouth open. And then here's his body. It's very, they have long, wiggly bodies. You can make him as wiggly. Maybe he's coming out of the water. Maybe, you know what, snakes do often swim. That's a great idea, why can't he be coming out of the water? Maybe he's saying, hey, how's your lunch? How are you doing there, bear? You enjoying those berries? Okay, so they're, they're having a little conversation. I'm going to put a quick little tree behind here just because I love adding lots of detail. So this would be like the shape of a, an a evergreen tree, not so much like the trees with leaves. Now. I'm going to paint a little bit, but you can keep drawing on yours. And also, you can add things like this. Look, I can just add lots of leaves everywhere, which I will continue to do, but you don't want to watch me make a whole bunch of leaves. You can put leaves. You can put fruit in your tree. You can put apples if you want it to be an apple tree. Or you can put anything you like there. So see how I'm adding for yours. And, um, and remember, you can send yours to me. I have right here, I have a, a website. So it's hollycar.com and you can send, you can find me there and then send me your pictures because I'd love to see them. Um, I love seeing your art because your art inspires me. Okay, here comes some painting. So what color should the dragon be? Anybody have any ideas for the dragon? Okay. Blue dragon. All right, here he comes. Here comes the blue dragon. So what I do when I use a blue, I put a little bit of purple first. Then I use my blue. I have two different blues. And if you look in a crayon box or whatever, a lot of times you'll have more than one shade of color. So it's good to use more than one shade of blue. Because look at that, I've used a purple, a blue, and now I've got a turquoise. It's all in the blue family, but it gives him some depth and it makes his face pop out a little bit. See how his cheek is coming out there? So I'm gonna give him a little bit more purple here. Ooh, down there. And here comes the blue over top. And I'm gonna show you how you can do something really cool. Now you see those little, those little scales I was showing you earlier? Now I want to make those scales look as fun as possible. So what I'm going to do, here we go, let me get a little bit more blue on him. Gonna add a little water. Now I'm painting on silk, that's what I'm doing here. If you're working at home, you might have markers or crayons or just a pen or pencil, color pencils, whatever you have. Whatever you can make marks with, you can still overlap color. So anything you have, it's fun to overlap. Okay, so I've got my little dragon head. Now watch what happens. You see these little bumpy scales? So a lot of times I'll put a color in at the very bottom. Watch, see I'm doing a little bit in the peak of each. I know this can seem a little complicated, but you just watch, it's kind of like magic. So I have each little scale painted in. Now I get another color, I get a lighter blue. And then I'm gonna do this. So I got the dark blue, the medium blue. See how I'm doing each one all a bit at a time? And then I take my water, which you would take like a white or something, and I watch. I'm gonna put a little bit of water at the very tips, like that. And then if you look, 
you will see that each, each scale starts overlapping and they look, like, they look like they're on top of each other rather than sitting beside each other. It's a little trick you can do when you're making scales or feathers. I'm gonna put a little bit in here. Okay, so we need some more color. So what about the unicorn? What color should the unicorn be? Uh, how many colors? How many colors? Um, like red, yellow, and orange. Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so let's do, we'll start with red. Here it comes, unicorn. Red, yellow, and orange, like all fiery, right? Okay, so let's yeah. put in some, here's some, and whoops. I picked My up. unicorn is, uh, is an angel queen. Oh, I love that. Now I'm gonna put a little shading in there. Now we're gonna Ain't she an angel queen? plump this up. You sound very imaginative. I love your ideas. Okay, put a little yeah, bit more a bald eagle. Oh, a bald eagle. Did you put a bald eagle in your picture? Yep. Oh, I love he just that. Flew down. Did he? He only has half a leg. Half a leg? Well, that's good. You can you can get by with half a leg, I'd say, quite well. And here comes, oh. There we go. Now he has more than a half a leg. <laughs> you added some more, did you? Isn't that amazing when you do art that you can add anything you like, that you can make anything any way you like. That's really cool to be able to use your imagination like that. Okay, so look at him. He's all fiery. He's like, he's a fiery dragon. Now in his flames, I'll probably put a couple of different colors. I'll stick, I'll put a little bit of red in the flames, but I'll also put lots of yellow. And I might even add some pink in there a little later They're on. Talking. There he is. The dragon is talking to the unicorn. These are having a conversation and a little bit of fire's coming out when he talks to him. So I'm gonna do this. Okay, what color, what color should our um, bear be? Because I can go back and keep painting him. What do you think about the bear? Brown. You want a brown, brown brown bear? All right, he's going to be brown. Here he comes. So um, once again, I'm going to start with a dark brown. Look at here. He, I'm coloring in his back, the part that's scratching the tree. And now I'm going to do a lighter brown over top. See how I mix colors together? Whenever you can mix colors together, it's so much fun. Don't be afraid to put other colors in with other, because nothing's just one color. There, And especially when you're using your imagination, you can really have fun with it. Okay, so here's little bear. Maybe you could have a pink face. A pink face. Well, I can put a little pink there for sure. Okay, let me get his belly done. You can see I'm painting his back leg now. We're almost done. How's our time doing, Alan? Two What's minutes. my time? Two minutes. Okay, so I'm going to paint what I can in two minutes. So if you have any more suggestions, let me know now because I'm going to be going soon. And when I'm gone, I'm going to get. I'm going to keep painting until you until I disappear from your screen. But what I'd like you to do is if you can keep drawing or you do any drawings, I would love to see them. I can't tell you how happy. A blue snake. Oh, what color do you think the snake should be? Black. Black snake, okay. We'll leave him till the end if he's gonna be black because he'll just disappear with, from your um, view. With yellow polka dots. Oh, that's kind of nice here. Let me get the pink bear face first. There's the pink face on the bear. Here he comes. Okay, I don't even, gee, you know what? I don't even know if I have a black, so I'm going to mix a couple colors together and I'll make him, I'll make him kind of dark. It'll be like a purple, but I'll go over him with black when I get home because I have to add the black. But I can do yellow. I can do some yellow in there. Holly, where are you? Where am I? I'm in Canning in my hometown and I'm in a big empty old church that's, <laughs> that nobody's here so I'm all by myself, well, well with my husband and he's filming this. It's very cold in here which is why I have my hat on today because I'm a little bit chilly. My hands are a little chilly um, but it's really fun because I'm getting warmed up painting for you guys. So I, mean, I need one more suggestion. Um, what about the unicorn up there? Is he going to be orange and things too or should he be another color? Sure. It could be orange and any color. Okay, so we'll keep him the same. What about the spider? Anybody have some colors for the spider? Black and green. Green. Okay, let's put some green on him right now. And then I'll I go. I love that green suggestion. Um, like, how about a rainbow unicorn? Oh, that's kind of a nice idea. We don't have a rainbow unicorn. And you know what? 
The babies don't always have to look like the moms or the uncles. They can look different. So we can make him a Yeah, that was like the dragon. Yeah. And the unicorn. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. You think that's a good suggestion? I like that suggestion. So we're going to have, okay, so here's the decision because I'm going to be going soon. I'm going to keep painting, but I want you to keep working at her and then I'm going to post this so you can see it when it's all done so that I don't want you to have to watch me paint for like an hour here. So I'm just painting in little bits and pieces. If you have any suggestions, let me know and I'll put them in while I'm gone and then, and then you can come back and look at them. So here's, let's go over the story quickly before I lose you. So we have a beautiful tree that offers lots of comfort. It's offering food for the squirrel and a home. It's offering a nice place to rest for the bear and some, some shade for the dragon who's coming in to get his fire all re fixed up. And then while he's there, he's meeting a friend, a unicorn with fire, but there's a beautiful river going under the tree where they can make sure that their flames don't get too out of control because we don't want to hurt our forest. And then we have a baby unicorn, a rainbow unicorn, coming in to see its mama who is actually a flaming unicorn or its uncle. You can decide who you want that to be. We have a beautiful bat buzzing around, eating some flies um, because the bugs might be attracted to the tree in the area, so then the bat would come in. We have a spider who's made his home right here in the, in the, with his web, right into the branches. I'm going to make this an apple tree, so I'm going to add lots of apples. I can go all over the place and add apples wherever I like. You can make your tree any kind of tree you want. See how I put little apples everywhere and little leaves? And here's another little leaf. So we, what we've created together is a comfort tree, a tree where all these creatures are coming together. And you see how they're not hurting each other? They're all just decided that this is a tree where they can be safe and they can come together. And so that's what we're going to do right here. And wouldn't that be a lovely thing? And maybe you can go out and sit under your tree at home or in your backyard or a park because some of the parks are open and you can enjoy your tree uh, the same way all these creatures are. And um, I'm going to be back Monday. We're going to do something entirely different. So uh, I hope to see you guys back on Monday. And you can watch Thank me paint till things go. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing Thank your art. You. If you can send me pictures, send me your pictures of your art. I'd love to see them. Okay, bye. I'm going to keep painting away here. I've got lots to do. Lots of painting to do. I think I need some music on or something.